Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. Welcome back to Everyday Medical Solutions, where this week on the channel I'll be doing a tabletop review of the Buck Knives Model 110 Folding Hunter. Before we begin our head-to-toe assessment on this iconic folding knife, I have to mention that I am still sponsorless. I bought this knife with my own fiat currency, and these are my opinions. Let's start with demographics. The Buck 110 Folding Hunter debuted in 1963 now manufactured in Post Falls, Idaho, with an MSRP of $60 Canadian. I think that's like two bucks American? Eh? Bucks? <laughs> the buck knife is so iconic, in fact, that when you say pocket knife to a normie, this is what they recall from their long-term memory into their visio-spatial sketch pad and their working memory, first described by Alan Badley and Graham Hitch in 1974. This is your grandpa's pocket knife. Buck Knives USA is 120 years old and is credited with making the first lockback folding hunting knife considered strong enough to replace a fixed blade. The wiki page says that since 1963, Buck has manufactured more than 15 million 110s. With such a long legacy, it's not difficult to understand why this is the most copied knife design and that it's ingrained in pop culture. It's been said that this is the most popular knife to appear in movies and on TV. Do people still watch TV? I haven't paid for cable in like 12 years. Like, what are they even watching? Anyways, let's expose and examine the knife. Today, the 110 handles are made from diamond wood, which is meant to emulate the look of ebony, because the hippies at the EPA have classified it as an endangered hardwood, and therefore it's not available for use in commercial processes. The bolsters and integrated liners are made out of brass, which patina over time, adding a timeless and beautiful appearance. They are easily restored to their original brilliant luster with the application of a soft metal polish. The Wicked Shap 3 and 3 quarter inch satin finished hollow ground clip point blade is made out of 420 giggity high carbon stainless steel and features a sharpened swedge, which greatly increases the efficacy of game processing. Normally, 420 HC is a crap metal but along came Poly Boss with his proprietary heat treatment making this 420 stainless steel very usable. 420. The 110 weighs 7.2 ounces, and for the rest of the planet, that's 200 grams, allowing this classic folder to double as a hammer or a fist load for when you have to knock extra loud on Granny's door for that 26 alpha that just puts you into two hours OT. The knife is just under 5 inches when it's closed and a boot 8.5 when she's open. Here it is compared to a Canadian maple leaf. Here it is compared to a $2 bill. And here it is compared next to a Motorhead guitar pick. Man, those concerts were great. Rest easy, Lemmy. The blade is held open via a back lock located late on the handle. This is definitely a two-handed knife. This is how I open and close the blade. Safety first, right friends? The 110's design predates the invention of the pocket clip, which is credited to Sal Glesser of Spyderco, who, in 1981, released the Clip It Worker, effectively creating the first tactical folding pocket knife. As such, Buck includes a genuine leather belt sheath crafted in Mexico. Nowadays, Buck USA has many designs and variants, and variants of variants, at BuckKnives.com, you can see there are more modern upgrades to the original design, such as including modern materials, making the knife significantly lighter, making some variants more thin, and there are also a variety of blade profiles and materials. You can see here, you can get a plain edge S30V, or you can get one that's partially serrated. You can choose between brass or nickel bolsters. You can add finger grooves. You have your choice of handle materials. Elk, wood buffalo. This blue wood one, that's really cool. You can pick out a sheath or zip case. And you can even have it engraved.
Now, I'd like to draw your attention to these variants here. These two fully semi-automatic, high-capacity, assault-styled pocket knives are not available in the freedom-loving nation of Canada. These little guys right here are as illegal as hand grenades or criticizing our political leaders. Isn't that neat? But this SRB variant right here, that's totally fine. So, while I'm on duty, there are two things I insist on having on my persons at all times, as opposed to being carried on my ballistic vest or on my radio carrier. No matter which service I'm working for that day, whether it's Metro, Subaru, Nats, or IFT, and those two things are a reliable multi-tool and a folding pocket knife. I have like a hundred knives and watches. There's a little future content hint for you. Oftentimes, I will switch out different pieces of kit based on where I'm working or what I'm feeling that day. This American Classic is in the rotation for five reasons. Reason number one, it's a classic. If you're a gearhead like me, how do you not own one of these? Like, do you even knife, bro? Reason two is aesthetics. This belt knife totally matches my plaid flannels and mustache. Reason three, the PP ratio. The price to performance on this bad mother is near unbeatable. But if you do get beat, go to Cabela and grab another one. This ombre is so ubiquitous in North America, you can find them everywhere. Reason four. If I'm working for a more subacute service and going for a minimalist loadout, sometimes I'll throw my Raptor shears in my pocket, so having a belt knife is optimal. And reason number five, because America, okay? I don't have to explain myself. I do what I want. Well, thanks for watching my video. Check back next week and you can watch my review of the Olight M2R Warrior. This is the next level, way over the top, ouch my eyes, helicopter searchlight I carry when I'm working the night shift downtown.